This video was inspired by an article I saw which I thought would make an amusing little short. But when I looked into it, I found that things weren't quite as straightforward as the story made it seem. What was reported as a simple story of politicians doing stupid things turns out to have one extra detail that not all articles thought it necessary to mention. And this is a pity because it's actually relevant to a very important debate that's going on in Germany right at the moment. Should German autobahns have a speed limit? Because because quite famously, at the moment, they don't. Or at least they kind of don't, sort of, partly. All right, so what is the current situation? OK, here's a quick explanation. This rule applies not just on autobahns, but also outside of urban areas on dual carriageways, or if you're American, divided highways, and any road with at least two lanes in each direction. For cars not towing any trailer, and for any other motor vehicle with a maximum permissible weight of no more than 3.5 metric tons, there is no default speed limit, but a recommended speed of 130 kilometers an hour. And of course, if a specific speed limit is posted, that overrides everything. I mean, go on, Rubos explains. Don't you think that's overkill? <clears throat> so, here is the story as I originally read it. In the state of Brandenburg, there is a section of autobahn which 20 years ago was considered something of an accident black spot, and so the state imposed a speed limit of 130 kilometers an hour. Subsequently, the number of accidents fell, in fact it was halved, and so now that section of autobahn is no longer dangerous. And because it was no longer dangerous, the speed limit is now being lifted. But wait, it was the speed limit that was making it safe. Well, of course, that's stupid. And yes, some of the politicians involved in making the decision have defended it by pointing to there being fewer accidents. Meanwhile, the police, who, unlike the politicians, actually get to see firsthand the carnage caused by a really bad accident, are apparently a little bit annoyed that their advice to keep the speed limit has simply been ignored. But as I said, there is one detail that this story leaves out. The reason the speed limit is being lifted now is that construction work to improve and modernize the road is now complete. So the autobahn that had the speed limit was part of the A24, which connects Hamburg and Berlin, specifically this section between Wittstock and where it meets the A10 Berlin ring. So that was the part that was modernized, right? Well. Partly, actually, it was this section here, and in fact, most of the important work was being done on the A10. But I mean, it's not unreasonable to think that the new improved autobahn might now be safer, but still, it has to be said that halving the accident rate is clearly a good thing. But the problem is that Germans have a tendency to react to speed limits the way some Americans react to gun control. It can be very difficult to have a proper debate on the subject without one or both sides losing their minds. And so you'll find people very passionately arguing that speed limits reduce the likelihood of accidents, and other people just as passionately arguing the exact opposite. It can be very difficult to get at any kind of reliable figures. But from what I've been able to find out, in terms of fatalities per 1,000 kilometers of motorway per year, Germany is about average for Europe and only slightly worse than the Netherlands, which has the lowest motorway speed limits in Europe. It turns out that other things also affect the number of accidents on the motorways. Things like the density of the motorway network, how well maintained the roads and vehicles are, attitudes to drink driving. The big effect that speed most probably does have, though, is how likely an accident is to be fatal. Now, about 30% of the German autobahn system has permanent speed limits, so we can compare accidents on sections with speed limits and accidents on those without. And this is what the Spiegel did a couple of years ago using statistics from 2017. Per 1 billion kilometers traveled, there were nearly 80 accidents on sections with a speed limit and just over 71 on sections without. This is probably not because speed limits are more dangerous, but because they tend to be applied to sections of the autobahn that are dangerous or congested, and perhaps the accident rate would be much higher if those speed limits were not there. But what's really interesting is that if you look at the numbers of injuries and deaths, there are far more of those on sections without a speed limit, which means that on these sections of the autobahn, you may be 
be at less risk of actually having an accident. But if you do have an accident, then you are at much greater risk of going to the hospital or the morgue. All of which makes me think that my initial reaction to the story of the speed limit being lifted was probably correct after all. It really is a stupid idea. And I haven't even started on the fuel saving aspect, which of course in recent years has become even more important than normal. But that's what I think. I know that some of you will probably have your own ideas, so don't be afraid to let me know in the comments. All right, look. <clears throat> you and I, we've got to have a talk about the whole Rubos Explains thing. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. It's laughable. It's not me, is it? I mean, what are people going to think when they see it? Rubos Explains. I mean, what? A Who came up with that idea anyway?